Hello everyone. Today we are telling you the story of Edinburgh's most famous dog, Greyfriars Bobby. And there's everything in Edinburgh, anyone famous, we name a pub after them. It's like the Greyfriars Bobby pub is getting a little bit of work done on it right now, but you know, hopefully by the time you visit it'll be open. And here it is, the famous Greyfriars Kirkyard. Now the story of Greyfriars Bobby is one that's really held close to the heart by anyone in Edinburgh. Myself a lot as well because I had um, two terriers, Cairn Terriers, growing up which I always associated them with Greyfriars Bobby even though Greyfriars Bobby was a Sky Terrier. They look very similar, you know that terrier look and even now if you watch our videos you'll know I've got a Border Terrier now as well called Merlin. So there's always there's, there's a soft spot in my heart for terriers. Um, a lot of people will say that the story of Greyfriars Bobby is made up. To everyone in Edinburgh the story of Greyfriars Bobby is completely true. There's no doubt in our minds it's a true story. It's one of these stories that why would it's a really random one to have made up. It's a beautiful story of loyalty for a dog and its master. So just in case you don't know the story, let's start at the beginning. So, in 1850, uh, a gentleman called John Gray and his family moved to Edinburgh and he was a gardener but fell on harder times and was struggling to get a job as a gardener. So got a job as a constable so he didn't have to go to the workhouses and then started to walk the beat in Edinburgh. Over the years he adopted a little Sky Terrier whose name was Bobby and John and Bobby started to become a familiar face to everyone as he wandered around Edinburgh and they walked their beat. Now in 1858 unfortunately John Gray died and was buried here in Greyfriars Kirkyard. After this Bobby became almost a permanent resident on his master's grave. He used to sit on the grave every night, never left its side, um, to the annoyance of the people who looked after the graveyard. Now, after a little while, they realised that they weren't going to get rid of Bobby, and they decided to just start feeding him. So they gave him a little bit of food so that they knew that he wasn't going to starve. And Bobby started to become famous around town. Everyone started to know about Bobby who would sit on his master's grave every night. So as the days went on Bobby became more and more famous. Crowds would start to come to see Bobby as he looked after his master, guarded over his grave and a gentleman called William Doe, a carpenter, um, almost became a surrogate second owner, not really but um, Bobby would start to follow him to the same cafe every day so he could get scraps of food there as well. Now this all carried on quite well until the city of Edinburgh introduced a licensing law for all dogs. Every dog must be licensed and have its license paid or if it didn't the dog would be found and would be destroyed. So by this point Bobby was ridiculously famous around town. The people of Edinburgh had kind of adopted him as their own. The Lord Provost at the time then decided probably by a little bit of push by the people of Edinburgh to um, pay for Bobby's license himself. And he was also gra almost granted the freedom of the city. His license was paid by the city of Edinburgh. He was awarded a collar, which apparently, I haven't been to see it, but I have heard that you can go to the Museum of Edinburgh and Bobby's collar is in there. Um, and he was granted the freedom of the city. And then he carried on being this loyal dog for the rest of his days, visiting his master's grave. By the time they'd wanted to introduce this bylaw, of the license and that was 1867 so you have to remember Bobby's master had died in 1858 so this was almost you know this was nine years later people knew Bobby by that point so the idea of Bobby being destroyed for something like this was probably outrageous to the people of Edinburgh at the time um, so like I said the Lord Provost paid his license which almost set Bobby in history which he'd, he'd kind of almost done himself Bobby then passed away in 1872 and he was buried here in Greyfriars Kirkyard. So since his master died in 1858 and Bobby died in 1872, that's what, 14 years that he looked after his master. Uh, but Bobby died at the age of 18. 
ripe old age for a wee Sky Terrier. Kirkyard keepers here um, actually had built him a little shelter near his master's grave at night time as well so that he wasn't completely shivering the cold through the night. But you can visit, if you come to Grey Friars Kirkyard, you can visit both his master, John Gray's grave, and Grey Friars Bobby himself. And here it is, John Gray, died 1858, old jock, master of Grey Friars Bobby. And here is Grey Friars Bobby, the first grave you see when you come in. Grey Friars Bobby died 14th of January 1872, at 16 years, sorry, not 16, not 18. Let his loyalty and devotion be a lesson to us all. Erected by the Dog A Society of Scotland and unveiled by Her Royal Highness the Duke of Gloucestershire on the 13th of May 1881. And just outside Greyfriars Kirkyard, the Dog A Society of Scotland erected one other thing to remember Bobby a water fountain, which still stands right outside the gates of the Kirkyard. And that is the story of Greyfriars Bobby. Uh, just a couple of little things if you're going to come visit. Um, it's busy. It took me a little while to be able to get a moment or two by Bobby's grave just to film a little bit and a little bit peace and quiet. Uh, lots of tour groups coming in. Greyfriars Kirkyard itself has a lot of stories, a lot of good stories. I will be back to tell you more of them, especially if you're a Harry Potter fan, there's a cracker in there. One little thing that I will ask if you do come and visit, you'll notice the statue that I showed you on Greyfriars Bobby, the nose has went all shiny and gold and it's because in recent years people have started rubbing the nose for good luck and it's damaging the statue. People are keeping rubbing it and rubbing it and the council and everything have asked, please don't do it, but people are still doing it. So if you do come, please don't. Don't rub the nose. And that is about it this week, guys. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to learn more about Edinburgh or things to do or the history or anything, you know, you may as well subscribe. We put a video up every week, so you know, be nice. Give it a little, give it a little subscribe. Um, but till next time, Bye humans.